my channel I hope you all are doing well today we are going to talk all about chronic pain what it is how it's diagnosed all about chronic pain the ins and outs of it so I hope you guys are ready you know the drill like comment subscribe hit the bell for notifications of when I upload and let's start talking about some chronic pain how chronic pain is kind of defined is that it's a persistent pain that can last over three months to years. And it can be caused by things like inflammation or dysfunctional nerves. Now, one in five people globally are affected by CP, chronic pain. That is 1.5 billion people globally. And in America, that is 50 million people affected by chronic pain. That is a lot of people and your girl is one of them. Now, now, what exactly is chronic pain? So it's a long-standing pain that persists beyond the usual recovery period or occurs along with a chronic health condition. And it can be on and off again type of pain or continuous pain. And what I mean by on and off again pain is like there is periods where you're in a lot of pain and periods where you're not. So you're not always in pain but there are times where you are, and that is the type of pain I have. So there are four types or categories of chronic pain. The first one is nociceptive pain, which is injury to your tissues. So an example of that is arthritis. The next one is inflammatory pain, which is an abnormal inflammation caused by an inappropriate response by your body's immune system. So think of, or an example is gout or rheumatoid, arthritis. The next one is neuropathic pain, which is nerve irritation. So an example of that would be neuropathy or neurogenic, which is damage to your nerves, which Neuropathic pain is one of the types of chronic pain I have. I have two out of the four types of pain. And neurogenic is the exact type of neuropathic pain I have. So I have damage to my nerves where I had surgery. So I've had 18 abdominal surgeries and that caused a lot of nerve damage in my on my belly. So I have neurogenic pain. The next one is functional pain, which is kind of pain caused without origin but still causes pain which an example of that is fibromyalgia which the other type of pain I have because I have fibromyalgia how does chronic pain affect the nervous system and the body? I felt like this was kind of an important thing to add to this video because understanding how pain works and how chronic pain affects the body can help you manage your chronic pain and create the best quality of life for you and your condition. So first off to note is that chronic pain makes the nervous system more sensitive to pain. And this is because chronic pain repeatedly stimulates the nerve fibers and cells that kind of detect, send, and receive pain signals. And this can change the structure of those fibers and cells, making them more active. So this results in them creating pain from something that isn't painful or making something painful more severe. Now, let's make this more easy to understand, right? When you're experiencing pain, you touch something hot, that pain that you instantly feel goes from your fibers through the nervous system up to your brain. Your brain says, oh, that's hot, tells the signals to tell your hand that's hot, you're experiencing pain, move away. So you're experiencing pain. In somebody who has chronic pain, 
touching something as simple as my planner, that overactive cells and fibers is saying, oh, oh, that's that 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 hurt pain. It's firing up to the brain, and the brain's like that that hurt. So resulting in something that's not painful, it's saying that pain. So something that's not normally painful is painful. Or I'm having a little bit of stomach pain. My brain's like, oh, that's more severe than it usually is. But sometimes that's not, not always the case. Sometimes you are experiencing that severe level of pain. Oh, so it's kind of a, a hard thing to really weave and understand, you know, what, what you're exactly feeling, you know? So I hope I, I explained that the best I could. There is no cure for chronic pain. And chronic pain interferes a lot of times with things like daily activities, work, social life, taking care of yourself, and it can lead to depression and anxiety and trouble sleeping. And all of that can actually make things a lot worse. And it almost creates this cycle that is very difficult to break. Next, it is important to know how to kind of describe your pain, especially when you are talking to doctors, because a lot of times chronic pain is invisible. They can't exactly see it unless it's like protruding out. So describing your pain in these type of categories are very important, and I'm going to do my best to tell you these. So first one is kind of provocation and palliation. So what was happening when it started, what provokes it, what alleviates it. The next one is is quality and quantity what's it feel like and how often does it happen is it sharp dull stabbing nauseating things like that and where is it located and does it radiate be as specific as you can the next one is your pain scale 1 to 10 how bad does it hurt 1 being no pain 10 being the worst pain you've ever experienced and the last one is timing does it change based on the time of day weather, activity, position, when does it happen? Like what timing? What does it change at any point? When diagnosing, they take what you said, kind of what we just talked about, describing your pain into consideration when diagnosing chronic pain. And then they're going to also examine you. They'll probably take blood tests, urine tests, imaging. The If it has to do with nerves, they'll do a nerve conduction study, which is to see if the nerves are doing what they're supposed to, working properly. They will probably do a reflex and balance test. Um, they might test your spinal fluid. It just honestly depends on what type type of chronic pain you're having and what may be causing it. That's kind of what they're looking for is what is causing your chronic pain and what is happening here. The next thing is treatment. What they're going to do is try to ID the underlying cause and if they can't, they are just going to treat and manage the chronic pain. And I say if they can because if you remember the four categories of chronic pain, one of them was functional pain which is where they can't exactly pinpoint the cause of your chronic pain. So if that is the case, they are just going to treat and manage your chronic pain. Now, treating chronic pain is just going to be medication, lifestyle change, and therapy. Let's break that down. So medications, they're going to use things like muscle relaxers, NSAIDs, so over-the-counter meds like Tylenol and ibuprofen. They're going to use topical creams, opioids, or corticosteroids. It all really depends on, again, what is the reason of your chronic pain or, you know, your diagnosis. Lifestyle changes, they're going to talk to you probably about your lesson stress in your life, working on your sleep habits because that's very important, diet and exercise. Therapy is going to be a major factor because you're going to want to lessen your pain, manage it, and learn. Next we are going to talk about treatment. 
So they're going to try to ID the underlying cause of the chronic pain if they can. And I say that because if you remember earlier, we talked about the four different types of chronic pain and one of them was functional pain. And that is when there's not an ex exact cause of the pain, but you're having pain. So remember, fibromyalgia. Now, if that happens and they can't figure out what the underlying cause is, they're just going to treat and manage the pain. Managing and treating treating chronic pain is doing medication, lifestyle change, and therapy. Let's break that down. So medications, they're going to use things like muscle relaxers, NSAIDs, which are Tylenol or ibuprofen, things over the counter like that. Topical creams, opioids, or corticosteroids. Just depends on your chronic pain, really. What is your diagnosis? Lifestyle change, they're going to talk to you probably about trying to lessen the stress in your life, working on improving your sleep habits, eating right, and exercising. Therapy is going to teach you how to lessen your pain with things like um, PT, physical therapy. It's also going to help you manage your pain and teach you coping skills. Now, they also might try to do things like nerve block or steroid injections to help stop the pain as much as they can, or things like ketamine infusions, which if you don't know what that is, I will link that video in the description box down below for you. But it's just ways to help stop the pain for as much time as they can. Now, doing all this, they actually have had success rates of reducing people's pain scores by 30% which is remarkable and I can tell you that I'm on quite a few meds for my chronic pain and I've tried nerve blocks and they've never worked but the stuff that I am on has decreased my chronic pain quite a lot so I do know definitely that a lot of these treatments do work it's just finding what treatment worked best for you and that is the healthcare system as a whole. Next we're going to talk about risk factors and there's quite a few that I found. The first one being genetics. So genetics can cause you to be more susceptible to chronic pain or developing a condition that can be accompanied by chronic pain. For example, of course I'm going to use myself as an example. For anybody new here, my mom has an autoimmune disease. She has lupus and she has chronic pain. I, through genetics, got the lovely bonus of having my own autoimmune disease. I have Crohn's disease, which is accompanied with chronic pain. Genetics. Next is obesity. Obesity can make certain health conditions worsen, like arthritis for an example. Due to the extra added pressure on the joints, it can cause arthritis and worsen it, developing VP. Next is age. It looks like statistics show that the older you get, the more susceptible you are to chronic pain. Previous injury, you're more susceptible. Labor intensive jobs, PTSD, stress, and smoking makes you more susceptible to chronic pain. Now we're going to talk about complications. We talked a little bit on how chronic pain can affect your daily activities such as work, social life, and the way you take care of yourself. And this can really decrease your quality of life. It can cause depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. And if you're dealing with a chronic disease, it can worsen it and it can increase a risk of suicide or suicide ideations. Which I want to say if you're experiencing either of those two things to so please call the hotline number in the description box down below it's also right here on the screen it is 800-273-8255 my email is also always in the description box down below if you ever just want to talk i'm always here last thing i want to talk about and then i'm going to play a song for you guys is the difference between acute pain and chronic pain. So acute pain is kind of provoked by a specific disease or injury and is self-limited. It begins suddenly and lasts a short time. It disappears when the cause of the pain is treated or healed. So think of things like cut burns, pulled muscle, or a broken bone, okay? 
so that's the difference between acute pain and chronic pain so it don't acute pain only lasts a little while and chronic pain lasts a long time and it's persistent it don't just go away all right you guys i hope you enjoyed this video and if you're experiencing chronic pain i would love to hear how you manage it and deal with it also there's going to be a part two to this video it'll be up next week and it's going to be questions that i found on the internet that i'm going to answer from my personal point of view okay so that'll be up next week from that i say thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe and well, I'll see you guys in the next one.